Hey everybody, welcome back to My Jury Bench. Today we're going to continue on with a solution to a problem that has cropped up with the Asset Manager and Blender 3.0. So let's talk about it. When you try to store an object that you've created, a model that you've created that has multiple objects within that model, you run into a problem. We're gonna show that problem today, and then I'm gonna show you a solution for that problem. It's not a perfect solution, but it is yet a solution. So let's get started. So when we open up Blender, we're given our obligatory cube. Let's get rid of that. Actually, let's just load up a file. So I've taken the time to model uh, a sports car. So let's take a look at the sports car. And I'm gonna open it up, and right here, not change, here we go, this is my Italian supercar. It's in bright high-vis green, and you can laugh all you want. I'm just joking. So anyway, this car is made up of several parts. So let's take a look. We've got the car collection here. It's made up of the car body, and we've got the tires and the wheels. So there are three parts to this car. Now, if I want to, uh, well, let's first get rid of this collection with the camera and lights in it because we don't want to select any of those when we go to box select. So I've got my sports car here and what I want to do now is store this in my asset browser library. Now if you haven't followed along or you haven't determined how to use the asset browser, I've done a full video on how to use that. It's in the upper right corner so click that link and you can go watch that. It is a little bit lengthy but it does cover the asset browser from A to Z. Let's look at this model and let's talk about the fact that it's made up of multiple parts. So in your model, when you model anything with multiple parts, and if you don't parrot anything, for instance, I can grab the body and the body is, you know, on its own. I can grab the tires and move them around. So we could, we could just kind of grab those and move those wherever we want them. And the same with the wheels, we can do the same with the wheels here. So you just got to remember that, you know, multiple objects that aren't parented together have independent movements. I could go ahead and parent each of these, uh, the wheels and tires to the, to the frame of the car or the body of the car, which would allow me to then um, move the car body and the tires and wheels would follow. So let, let's say I wanted to parent this together so that all my objects were parented together, which means that there's a parent object that can move all the other objects and then each of the objects works independently of each other. So for instance, if I grab the wheels, hold the shift key down and select the car body, I can press control P and then parent the wheels to the car body. For instance, now that those are parented, if I grab the car body and I press G, the wheels should move with the car body as they do. And I can grab the tires and I can also hold shift key down and grab the wheels and I can do control P and parent the tires to the wheels. So for instance, if I grab the car body now, everything should move together, and that is perfect. That's exactly what we want. When working with the asset browser, I do suggest if we wanted to take this model and export it to our asset browser file or our library file, um, there's an important thing to remember, and that's to apply the rotation and scale of your existing model. Um, for instance, if I grab everything here and press Control A, and then apply rotation scale. Actually, I'm going to apply all transformations to this model just to make sure that it's perfectly uh, lined up with the 3D cursor in the center of the screen. So now that I've done that, I'm going to actually save this model. We're going to save it as a different model. So I'm going to do file, save as, and I'm still in my car test file. So I'm going to call this Peter's Supercar. And we're going to go ahead and save this. If you remember correctly, if you did watch that video about how to use the SF browser, you understand that the only way that I can add objects to my library file is to open that library file as if I was working on a Blender file, and then bring in a model that I've created, either by importing one or creating one within that library. So we're going to go do that now. My library file happens to be in a folder on my desktop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and open the library file in that folder. So file open, and I'm going to make my way to my desktop, and here you can see my library. So my Blender libraries, and here's my Blender library dot blend. This is the library file that I've made, temporarily at least, to store in my assets that I can use in other Blender files. So I'm going to double click that so I've opened it. Okay, so here's my Blender file, my library file, and here's the cube that I put in here a while ago. I'm just going to move that out of the way. So now how do I get that model into Blender so that it, it uh, comes in in one piece? Again, we don't need our camera, so we're going to get rid of this camera here. Uh, let's delete that. 
And we don't need the light because we don't need to do any rendering in here. Okay, so we've got our cube. That's the only other object in here. And I'm just going to actually put this over here and we'll get rid of this collection. Okay, so here you can see in our Blender library, denoted by the myblenderlibrary.blend file here. I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick. Um, I've got nothing other than the cube. So I want to bring in my supercar because I want to use my supercar in some other Blender files that I'm going to go out and create. So let's do that. Let's import that. There's only a couple of different ways to bring in a Blender file. So for instance, if I want to open up that Blender file and, a, and bring it in, I can only do it two ways. I can link the objects within one Blender file to another. However, that may defeat our purpose because we don't necessarily want to link that model, we want to actually bring it in. So the alternative is to append it. If we append it, we can go open that file with the supercar in it. So let's go down to my models. Here's my test car. And we've got Pete's supercar, so I'm going to double click that. And when I do that, if you've never used the append option in Blender, it opens up my Blender file that I have that supercar in. And these are all the settings and objects within that blend file. Now, mesh relates to the folder within this data file that holds the three objects that make up our car, the wheels, the tires, and the body. So I'm going to open that up, and here you can see the original names. It doesn't necessarily bring in the, the new names that I gave it, but it brings in the original names. So we've got cube, cylinder one, and cylinder two. I'm actually going to select all of those, and I'm going to come over here to this append button. I'm going to click on that, boom, open up, and here it is. It brought in my car, and because I'd used control A within my original supercar model and saved it, the alignment and orientation of my model is fine. So if I click on the car body and I move it, you can see it is not, it is not really associated with the tires and wheels. So if I grab a tire, I can move those, and if I grab the wheels, I can move those, and they're all independent. So I want to make these my supercar. So here's my model, and... I've got it all set here, and if I come over here and I've got these three selected, and let's just change the names in my library file. So we're going to select this and we're going to say body, and then I'll come down to this cylinder here, which is the tires, and we'll double click that and press tires. And now I'll grab the other one here, where is it? Cylinder two, which is my wheels. Wheels. Okay, so my body, my tires, and my wheels are all now, they're all there and they're not selected. So I'm going to hold the control key down and I'm going to select my body Then I'm going to select my tires and my wheels. So those three are selected. Now I want to save those in my library area right down here at the bottom because I want to make this an asset that I can use in other Blender files. I'm going to right click over here on any of these three objects that I have selected and I'm going to come down to mark as asset. And woo, look at that. Now we have three objects related to our car marked as assets. We've created three new assets. Now the issue is here, if I drag this car in, it's just the body. And if I drag in the tires, it just brings in the tires and the wheels all like that. So that's not going to work for me because obviously I want to bring in the entire car together. Now I can leave them all separate. We're going to control Z out of that. And I'm going to take these three objects and again, I'm just going to box select them. And what I'm going to do now is press control J. Okay, so I've joined those three together and it's named this now, it's called wheels. And we're just going to double click this and call this supercar because it's the really coolest, fastest car that I've ever made. So here's my supercar. Now I can right click on this and come down to mark as asset. Boom. And now it's created one object independent of all the others and it's got my complete car in there. Now if I get rid of the original one, so we'll just get rid of this original one. Well, actually, we'll just get rid of this. We'll take our original model over here. I'm just going to move it off to the side so it's not in the way. And then I'm going to save my library file. Remember, we are working in my Blender library .blend, or whatever you call yours. So I'm going to save this Blender library file by going down to Save. And then I'm going to come over to File, New, General. Okay, so real quick, I just want to go back into my Blender file here for the supercar. So I've got my supercar here. Let's open it up. So we're not going to save this. We're going to open up our supercar. And let's say that, you know, our supercar here is all 
uh, multiple pieces. So we've got tires. We can obviously grab the, the front, the chassis here and move it around. But let's say that you have, there's another way that you can import this with all the materials into your library. And it's very simple. So I've got my supercar here, right? And if I take my supercar, which is all parented, I'm going to select all my objects. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this as an OBJ file. And by doing that, I'm going to actually create a model that I can import into my library file and save as an asset with the materials, with everything set, and it's very easy to do. So I'm just going to, again, I'm going to do Control A. I'm going to apply all transformations just to cover myself. Okay, so with all that done, I'm going to select this particular model. I am going to press Control J just to make sure it's all joined together. And with this selected, what I'm going to do is come up to File. I'm going to come down to Export, and I'm going to export it as a Wavefront OBJ file. Over here, I'm going to select this little tick box, and I'm going to put a check mark in it, which says Selection Only. That means only the car model that I have selected on my 3D viewport is going to be exported as this OBJ file. Once that's done, I'll hit the Export button. Now that it's been exported as an OBJ file, what I can do is go back to my library. So I'm going to open up my Blender library file. We're not going to save this because we don't need the car right now. Now here's the original supercar. Here's the test cube. And what I'm going to do is come over to File, Import, and I'm going to come down to OBJ file. I'm going to come over to my car, which is under test car. And there it is, Pete's supercar object file. And there it is. So we're going to, we're going to rename this where it says uh, body or car body cube. I'm going to say supercar2. Okay, so now I've got supercar2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I am going to save this or mark it as an asset. There it is. Now you can see it did screw up my rotation and scale. So if you did make that mistake, just press control Z and then we can come over, select our supercar2, press control A, align rotation and scale, then again, mark it as an asset. Bam, there it is. Now, as you can see, the OBJ file brings in our color over here in our asset library folder. So if I save my asset library now, we'll go to file, save. We have car one, car two, which has the color to it. Even though there is color on car one, we just can't see it in our material view. And that's kind of awkward because OBJ file is kind of nice to have if you do want to do that. So I kind of recommend exporting to an OBJ file, but it's up to you. Now that that's done and I've saved my file, if I go to File, New, General, and again, we're going to bring up our asset browser right here. And again, we're going to select our user library file. And here you can see Supercar 1, Supercar 2, and the Test Cube. I'm going to zoom out here, turn off the end tabs key, and again, bring in our car model here and bring in our supercar model too. And if I go to material view, you can see both of them are green. Although in um, solid mode, at least it shows up with the OBJ file settings so that you can see it there. So guys, I hope this video helped. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. If uh, you have any other questions, please leave them in the description box below because I'll be happy to answer them whenever I have a chance. Thanks for watching and have a great day.